G'day and welcome to Green Fingers. Now, if you've been following the series, you'll know we've been doing something really different. Heading into primary schools and helping the kids with their learning experience by building sustainability classrooms. What is a sustainability classroom? Well, put simply, it's a food production machine where the kids can learn a lot about nature and they're really cool. You'll see what I mean tonight. We've already built classrooms at Cary Baptist College, Rollystone Community College, and the latest last week's was at Tewart Hill Primary School with an amazing result. This week it's Bannister Creek Primary School in Linwood, and they've been accredited by the Water Corporation as being really water wise. So this week we will share with you some great ideas that you can take home with you as well. It's a great step up for future generations here in Western Australia. So let's get on with it. The classroom is quite literally a classroom. I mean, here at Bannister Creek Primary School, they've got the amphitheatre, compliments of the hard work of the science teacher, Andrew McCarthy, who's busy, and also Craig Ashby, the principal. The kids will be really hands-on here. They'll get their hands in the dirt, they'll be able to grow the food, plant it as well, and on top of that, they'll be able to cook it in their alfresco style by Ferguson outdoor kitchen, which will be coming really soon. But it all starts with the soil. And in charge of our landscape team is Daz. And Daz, what's going to happen here? I'm digging a hole, Todd. It's one big hole. It's a big hole and there's going to be another 24 of them, 25 fruit trees in this urban orchard. Good man. Heaps of fruit for the kids. And I'm watching my friend Hamish over there putting out the chook pen. He's not working very fast. No, he's got one post in, but he's a big boy, so we won't say too much to him. You've got a heap of work to do, haven't you? I have, I have. I've got a lot to do, so. Nothing new for you, actually. Speaking of new, I've got to go and see Sue. So good luck, mate. Thank you, Todd. Sue Trollack, welcome to Green Fingers. What are you doing? Well, Todd, I'm going to be helping with the herbs and veggies and working with the kids to show them how to use the sustainability classroom Excellent. and how to care for it. Beautiful job. It looks like a little bit of work you need to do. Yeah, it's not too hard, Todd. Maybe you could help give us a hand here. Oh, uh, no, but thanks anyway. I've got, I've got things to do and people to see. Uh, yeah, anyway. And, of course, Steve is back, mate. Right? What about Good you? to see you, Todd. Well, we're going to get another aquaponic system up and running. Good, good. I'll be taking the kids down to Challenger Institute of Technology. Excellent. And we're going to teach them the science behind looking after their fish properly. Yes. We're going to be putting in a greenhouse. Oh, boy. But, mate, at the moment, mm -hmm. there's a heap of gravel to be spread. Pea gravel? See Looks like it. shovel, mate? Yes. It's got your name on it. Where has it got my name on it? <laughs> Give me a look. Let's get started. OK. <laughs> Come on. I'll have to help. I'll just go... I'll help over here. OK. Excuse Try me. harder. Try harder. <laughs> Some of the key points contained within the plan for this site is dealing with Linwood's terrible sandy soil, making a positive out of the sloping site, and to make sure all the aspects and components of the garden are easy to access and easy to maintain. Now, Sue, you're doing a fantastic job putting those garden beds together. Talk to me about where we're going to put them. Thanks, Daz. Well, we've put the veggie beds up here on the highest point of the garden, so they get plenty of sun. And then we're siding the urban orchard along the fence line, so that'll create a really good windbreak from the easterlies in summer. Well, I know how bad the easterlies in they'll howl through here through summer. Absolutely. So that should really cut down evaporation and um, give the garden a good chance. The aquaponics will sit in a prime location between two classrooms, and nearby will be the chicken coop, which is smaller here as we want the chooks to free range during the day, and they'll do their bit for pest and weed control. So, Sue, the rainwater tanks going between the two classrooms, big catchment area on the roof, so there'll be plenty of water to use in the garden. And it looks like you put the worm farm and compost there too, Daz. It's nice and shady, so that should work well. It'll work really well, and we'll put the big spick and span shed up in the top corner. All the tools and bits and pieces the teachers and kids need will all be there, easy to grab hold of. Yeah, layout looks great, so it all looks really accessible, and the garden should produce hundreds of kilos of highly nutritious, delicious food. It certainly should be excellent. So what do you think we should add to this sand to make it really good for vegetables, Pauline? Worms. Worms, excellent. Have you got a worm farm? Yeah. Excellent. Worms are very good for this sort of stuff. What about you, Aaron? I've got... Uh, water. What? Water? water? Yeah. yeah. Fertiliser. Water and fertiliser. Yeah. I believe that to be true. What about you, Uma? Cow manure. Cow manure. Excellent. That's called organic material. Yeah. See that stuff behind you? Yeah. All of that is going into the veggie patch and to the garden. Does it smell good? No. No, maybe. Yeah, it can be. <laughs> it doesn't smell that good, but it'll smell good with the veggies. After the break, uh, more soil and also a fishy excursion. Do you like fish? Yes. yes. Thank goodness. But I'm vegetarian. Oh. <laughs> I'm quite sure. I'm not vegetarian. I can, I can eat fish. Thank goodness for that. I'm glad you told us that. <laughs> well, 
Well, we've just about dug all the holes for the fruit trees, and surprise, surprise, the ground is nothing but this, my mortal enemy, gutless sand. So to combat this, I'm gonna get my best friend, soil solver. By mixing soil solver into the gutless sand, the combination of minerals, silts and clays will turn horrible, horrible sand into beautiful, beautiful loam, and the trees will thrive. Soil solver only needs to be added to your garden once. No need to reapply. And it helps the organic matter and nutrients to stay in the soil and not leach away. So they're there for the plants when they need it. Now there are a lot of products on the market that claim to do the same job as soil solver. But for me, this is the one with the runs on the board. We're also adding this rich organic soil conditioner from Biowise. It's made from materials that would otherwise end up clogging up landfill. Now this product will incorporate millions of soil microbes and microscopic fungi to the soil. This will improve the soil structure and added to the soil solver, these trees will be jumping out of the ground. The organic material in your soil will be slowly broken down and then consumed by the plants. So you will need to top it up from time to time. But lucky for you, Biowise will deliver directly to your front door. Nice shed, Toddy. Got a shed at home? What, is that it? Is that it? Yeah. Have I got a shed at home? Gaz, I've got three sheds at home. You will have shed envy by the time you finish talking to me about my shed. How big's yours? Mine's big. I've got one big shed. It's enormous. It's got how all my tools in it. How many cars can you fit in your shed? Two and a bit. Oh, that's terrible, because I can fit two and a bit, and I can fit... I've got a garden shed, and I've got a shed for my wheelbarrow. Thank Just you. for your wheelbarrow. Yeah. Do you know what that noise is? I don't really care at the moment because I'm too busy talking about sheds. This is a Spick and Span Sales WA shed, fully made uh, here in Western Australia. Manufactured, the guys come in and put it up for us. Engineer certified, totally covered. Do you love the colour? I love the colour. Do you know what the colour is? I have no idea. It's eucalypt. It's what? Eucalypt. Doesn't it also come in zinc alum? It does come in zinc alum and a range of other colour bond colours as well, Todd. Excellent. I love this because they've come and helped us out, which is fantastic news. And West Australian made. What is that noise? The noise is getting louder. Yeah. Uh, who, someone in the shed? Yeah, look, it's time for us to stop talking sheds and do a bit of a runner. I have no idea who that is. I don't know. I'm I don't want to know who's in there. I'm gone, mate. I'm not... What about that 15-year warranty on the shed? Hey, guys, oi! I love being a supervisor. This is good. Laminex. Hamish was going to build some Laminex shells in the shed. Yeah. Maybe that noise we heard that we thought was a gorilla locked in the shed. That was a gorilla. It was Hamish hey, and hey, gorilla. Hey, come on, you guys. <laughs> get out of it. Oh, Let me look. Get on the... Hey, listen, we better get out of here, mate. It's feeding oh. time at the zoo. <laughs> We're here in the aquaponics house with the grade sixes from Bannister Creek Primary. And this morning, we're going to be learning about the science behind aquaponics. Tony, there's a lot of issues we've got to test with the water, and the children have already started. Yes, yes, they're doing a great job, Steve. Um, with aquaponics, you really need to keep on top of the water quality, particularly elements such as the pH of the water, the ammonia, the nitrite. If you get those right, then you're going to have healthy fish and you're going to have healthy plants and the whole system depends upon each other, the fish, the plants and bacteria. Another really important issue is keeping a tab on how much the fish weigh so that we know how much to be feeding them. Absolutely, because you don't want to be underfeeding. Obviously if you underfeed they won't grow, but then you can overfeed and that leads to water quality problems. So knowing what the fish weigh at this particular time is very important to getting the amount of food you need to feed them right. Some of the results that we're getting from these systems are quite amazing, aren't they? I mean, look at these gorgeous lettuce. And the root system that they're developing is yes. just superb. Well, that's the beauty of uh, hydroponic systems like this. You're growing plants with very little water, and consequently, it's using uh, very little water to make it much more sustainable in the long run. So hydroponics and fish together makes aquaponics. The water is tested daily in the greenhouse, but once a week, a sample is brought into the laboratory for a more in-depth analysis. Tony, the aquaponic courses are available to the general public. Yes, they are, Steve. Here at Challenge Institute of Technology's Murdoch campus, we're running a weekend course uh, every term. 
What a great way to be able to come down and get fully informed on how to run your own aquaponic system at home. Kelly, why don't we drink water? This makes you healthy. Yes, it does. Fill up your drink bottle. That's good. Annika, why do we drink water? Because it keeps you hydrated. Oh, big word that, hydrated. Very good. What about you, Christian? How much water is in our body? 70%. 70%. So why do we drink water? To fill our bodies up. I like that. Very good. Fill up your drink bottle, mate. We're getting a few waters here. And uh, after the break, we're going to show you some houses. Two. One greenhouse, one chook house. The kids are back from the excursion. They've been fully briefed on the aquaponics, which is good news. Soil conditioning is coming along extremely well, and our mates from Masters have done such a good job on the brick paving. Service with a smile and a couple of listers to boot. The shed has been built, and Hamish and the team are doing such a good job on the chook. There's nothing happening at the, the chook pen. Where are the team? Defense! Oh, no, oi, 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 oi. Oh, that is not fair, Daz. What are you doing? Put the basketball away and get back to work. Hamish, hey, move it. You've got chooks, you've got people, you've got village people. He's huge. Get back to work, for goodness sakes. What are they doing? How you going, man? This is your ball. Good shot. Have a shot. Have a shot. Have a shot. Quick. Defense. Greenhouses have never been as common in Perth as they are in other parts of the world. And that's a bit of a shame but slowly people are starting to cotton on to the real benefits of having a greenhouse at home. And for the school, this will mean they'll be able to grow those warm climate fruits and vegetables right into the middle of winter, things like tomatoes and basils. And also they'll be able to get seeds and cuttings going much earlier in the season than what they would be able to otherwise. And the kids are so keen to start using this greenhouse, they're already into it. And helping them out is Simon from Grow Fresh. Simon. Yes. Great greenhouse. This is a perfect okay. size for this school. Do they come in other sizes? They do. They range from 2.2 metres right up to 9.4. I notice aluminium. Aluminium, yep. Um, extremely strong and will never rust. Never rust. Excellent. Now, one of my friends bought a greenhouse through one of the gardening magazines and it was pretty cheap. But as soon as they had the easterly winds, yep. every single bit of the polycarbonate blew off. Blew out, yeah. Well, these won't. They're all held in by silicon and also utilise our unique strip lock panel insertion system, so they won't go anywhere. So, Simon, I see we've got the shelves here and that cool little potting bench up the back. What other accessories do they come with it? Um, raised garden beds. We do the automatic vent openers. We've got shade systems, heaters, obviously the louver in the back wall there. Yeah, a whole range of accessories. Excellent. So you can adapt it to suit your specific needs. Correct. Something that will yep. work for everyone. Superb. Every garden should have one, even here in Perth. And if you're going to get one, these are not only cost effective, they look great too. I love the stainless effect from the aluminium frame and the polycarbonate sheeting produces incredible results. Kids, what do you think? It's awesome! Hamish! Yes, how are you, mate? Good, mate. Another sensational hen house. You are now officially the crown prince of the Poultry Palace. Hey, thanks for that, Des. Just another title for me to go in the lounge room. No problems, buddy. And I see you've drawn on your extensive home building experience to knock up a very fancy chicken retreat. Roof's a bit different to the other ones. Yeah, a little bit different. This one, we're just doing a hip and gable, and it's, uh, you know, structurally very, very sound and strong. Chicken's Pretty much enjoy looking at that all day too, I'd imagine. Looks fantastic, and a bit of a chicken run around chicken here for run. Them. Yeah, we've just done uh, timber construction with uh, the wire on the outside, and chickens can get let out during the day, and they can scratch around and, and uh, peck around, and you know get a bit of fitness up too while they're there. Oh, they love that, and mate, whacking some uh, super strong wire mesh on there as well. Yep, the mesh we've got here is just uh, supplied by White Wires. It's a 25 mil galvanised mesh, very strong, very sturdy. Uh, and it just gets nailed on to the uh, structure and keeps predators out and chickens in. That's fantastic. And you know, the average home handyman will be seeing this and say it's a fantastic looking chicken coop. I'm going to have a shot at knocking up one myself. 
How about giving them a tip so they get it done right? Uh, well, there's a lot of tips I could probably give these home handymen, but basically uh, the old the old tip is the measure twice and cut once, then you should be pretty right with that, I'd imagine. No problems, mate. Sounds fantastic. Now, Jez is very busy finishing off. You should give him a hand. I'm going to go over and practice my slam dunking on the uh, basketball court. Okay, board. mate, you need it. Now, tell me, why do we drink water? Because we get thirsty. Correct answer. Love it a lot. Manal, why do we drink water? Because our organs need water to work properly. Scientific evidence proves it to be true. Max, yes. how much water do we lose from our body per day? About 3 to 3.5 litres of water mm -hmm. a day by breathing and sweating. By breathing and sweating. So why do we drink water? To refill our bodies. Well done. Congratulations to all three of you. You're all correct. Coming up after the break, I believe that the rainwater tank rolls up, which is water, and we're all water wise. And on top of that, from our garden, we're going to cook a cake. Guess what cake it is? Carrot cake. Sprout. What? Carrot cake. Broccoli. Carrot. What? It's a broccoli cake, my favourite. <laughs> Utilising the water that falls on the roof is really important. And once again, we've called on the guys at Bushy Tanks to help us out. And as always, they didn't take a step backwards. They have given us a 4,000 litre rainwater tank as well as raised garden beds that are creating a bit of a sensation. A rainwater tank like this is a brilliant way to divert rainwater from the stormwater system, which can flush pollutants into our rivers and waterways, and when used correctly, can save up to 20,000 litres of precious scheme water.